Hello, good morning. Welcome to Growth and Grace. This morning we're going to talk about social anxiety. So not many of you know this. This is not something I've shared very often um, about the fact that I used to really struggle with this. Like I definitely, you might know I'm an introvert. You might know that I would describe myself as an outgoing introvert. I can definitely go out and be social and enjoy it. And then I love coming home and rejuvenating, replenishing, and relaxing in a quieter, calmer environment. Um, but I used to have really severe social anxiety, like to the point where I would literally get nauseous anytime I left my house. Um, I mean, almost it was like walking out to my mailbox. I would get this, oh my gosh, what if I ran into someone? Whether I knew them or not, it didn't matter. Like just people. I didn't want to interact with people. I was, I felt safe in my home with my animals and I did not want to go out and talk with people. And I think a lot of people can relate to this because, you know, if you've ever gone through a season or a whole long chunk of time in your life where you don't want to, maybe you're not enjoying your life. So you don't want to talk about it with people. You don't want to you know, you don't want to have small talk. You don't want to interact with people because you're not excited about anything going on in your life. So it all feels kind of fake and forced. And like, I have to come up with something that's going to be interesting to talk about because I'm going to be talking with people. So it feels safer to not talk with people and to just, I don't know what my hair is doing here, to just um, stay secluded and isolated and not go out and actually be with people. So I will tell you, I did not have like a light bulb moment around this as far as like, whoa, Susan, you're actually really struggling with social anxiety. Like it's not normal to get nauseous when you leave your house. Like that's not a normal thing. I didn't have that light bulb moment, but I do remember anytime I was driving and you guys know I love animals, so this is not going to shock you, but the reasoning behind it was an actual, like it was a conscious thought that I would have anytime I was driving. And I especially thought of it in my neighborhood. I would see people walking with their dog and I always would think like, man, that must be so nice to have a conversation starter and the dog, because everyone likes to talk about dogs. And, and if you're a dog person, then it's easy. If you're not a dog person, then you just wouldn't talk to the person, which also felt like a win because I didn't really want to talk to people. But I also felt like, oh my gosh, if I had a dog, that would really help with conversations because then I wouldn't have to talk about me or my life. We could just talk about how cute this dog is and I know and I'm so lucky to have him and oh, he's six years old and you know, you can go into that whole conversation and avoid any sort of real conversation, but then it still feels like, good job, I had a conversation today. So I always had that thought. That's not why I got my dog when I had my dog, but I just, I used to have that thought. And at some point I recognized, okay, this is not good that you're just stuck at home. At that point I had cats and, um, yes, plural, I know. Um, so at that point, you know, there was, there was a time and this was probably, gosh, this must've been eight or nine years ago when I was really having all of the social anxiety and, I decided to do a few things to really like make myself get over this because I knew as much as I didn't like being nauseous, like that sucks, but I knew I didn't want to live my life alone in my home. So it was kind of one of those choices of like, well, I can either like get over my nausea somehow. I didn't know how, or I could day at home where I didn't have nausea, but I also didn't have a life or friends or anything that I was looking forward to. So I didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't know what it was going to take for me, but I knew I didn't want to stay stuck at home with my cats for the rest of my life. So here's a couple of the things that I did, and I'm hoping this is helpful for any one of you who are watching who have social anxiety or who are struggling to figure out like, how do I get out of my house? Cause I don't want to just live the rest of my life here by myself. So the first thing is I, I made myself leave my house every day and it wasn't any big to do. I didn't make it some huge thing. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have to get ready in a ball gown to go anywhere, 
but I just made myself leave my house, whether it was walking around the block, whether it was going grocery shopping, you know, whether it was going, I, I guess I did have a couple people. So maybe I would go meet up with, with a friend, um, for a happy hour or something, but I would like make myself leave my house. And so that's one thing you can do. Just make yourself do it. It's not going to be comfortable. I'm not even going to pretend that it's comfortable or that it's like, oh, I get to leave my house today. A lot of the time it felt very like, oh my gosh, I haven't left my house yet. I have, I have to, because I told myself I was going to. That's commitment though, even when you don't feel like it. So that was one thing that I committed to. Um, another thing that I found really helpful for me was batching my social outings. So say for instance, you go to church in the morning and you also know you're going to need to run a couple errands that day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And maybe you also had plans to like grab lunch with a friend after church. So for me, and this is going to be a personal thing for you, for me, what worked super well was deciding I'm just going to do it all at once. Like I'm going to go leave my house for one big chunk of time and do all the socializing and just oh, prep my energy to be out and about for a longer chunk of time. But then I knew when I got home, I got to be home for the rest of the day. And so for me, that felt like, oh, that felt like the breath of fresh air that felt lighter to know that when I got home, I got to be there and I didn't have to leave again. So these are, these are a couple things that you can do that you can be implementing that try it out, try it on for size. You know, for some people, it's not necessarily going to be the length of time they're out and about. It's going to be the number of people they're around or the group of people they're around, right? Some groups are less, well, I don't want to say draining because it's not that it's draining, but extroverts know like you get energy from people. You get energy from being around people and introverts, we typically get our energy from being alone or in a quieter environment. So, you know, you got to gauge that, take that into consideration, whatever's going to work for you, but allow yourself to start recognizing it. So if any of this resonated with you, you might have social anxiety and it might be something to consider like, whoa, now that I'm aware of it, what are some things I can do to help overcome it? Well, one of the things you can start doing is to get out of your house and socialize with people. And then another thing I found really helpful in that season was finding certain topics to talk about. So again, if you're in that spot where you're like, I don't, I don't like my life. I don't enjoy it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't feel like there's anything exciting to have conversations around. And I hope to goodness, no one asks me how I'm doing because I don't want to tell them, right? If that's you. And that was so me all these years ago, like, please don't ask me about my life or my job or my this or that, because I'm not enjoying it. And I don't want to talk about it, but it didn't feel acceptable to say that. And I didn't know how to have an empowered response around any of that at that point. So it was me being totally fake. Like things are so great. Oh my gosh. Thank you for asking. Things are going super well, but I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't go into details. Things were not going super well. They were horrible because I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> so anyway, that's a whole different life, but, but what you can, do is have a few, these are not canned responses. So this is not being fake. It's simply having a few conversation topics that are easier to talk about. So for me, animals was an easy go-to, but it's not just a random, like, so do you, do you like, what do you think about giraffes? Right? Like it wasn't an awkward thing, although I definitely can bring awkward to the table. It was more of a, you know, hey, I was just watching this super interesting YouTube video the other day, or hey, I actually just read this really interesting article and it was talking about blah, blah, blah. And then you can lead into that topic and it doesn't have to be a topic that you're like incredibly passionate about. It doesn't have to be a topic that the other person is incredibly passionate about. It's simply having a few things in your back pocket that you can bring out when you don't know what else to talk about and you don't want to be in a spot that you have to like fake that everything's great or that you have to 
you know, I think there's a time and a place and, and I encourage you to be real about where you're at and to not be fake about it and to actually tell some key people who can support you. Things are not going well. I'm not happy. I'm really struggling. Absolutely talk about it. And don't bring that to a party. If you're going to a social gathering, if you're going out for a fun lunch with friends, <laughs> excuse me, you guys. Wow, I'm boring myself here. If you're going out to a, friend, a fun lunch with friends, that's not necessarily the space to bring up like what's really going on. So these were things that helped me get through my social anxiety of just being around people. This was not the solution to overcoming depression. There were a lot of things that poured into that. And actually getting over social anxiety did help because then I was not isolated any longer. And that was really key. So, um, so you guys can try these, practice these different things. Make yourself get out and about each day. However large or small your little jaunt out of the house is, batch your social outings. So decide for you. For some people, it's going to make more sense to go do everything at once and then come home and be home. For some people, it's going to make more sense to go out and then come home and rest and replenish and rejuvenate a little bit and then go back out for another um, little session of being social. And then have a few can no well, they're not canned responses but have a few like topics in your back pocket that you can talk about and it is helpful if you have recently read something or seen something um just because then it's like a recent it's top of mind my goodness sakes you guys are just getting the real deal this morning i'm i feel awake but my yawns would lead you to believe otherwise um but have a few different things and it can be a conversation that you had with a friend a few days ago. It can be something you read about. It can be something you watched. It can be, um, you know, something new that you learned. Like what's a cool new life hack that you learned or what's a new, um, what's an experience that you had the other day and like use those. They're very valid things that you can talk about. And it's a conversation starter. It doesn't mean you have to drive a 30 minute conversation with this one thing. It's simply getting it started. And what I found really helpful about this was actually because my tendency is to be a wallflower as I'm sitting against the wall right now, I would much rather like my natural tendency would much rather be to be a wallflower and just observe everyone and people watch and just kind of soak in what everyone's doing and kind of like I'm curious about them. And I wonder what their story is. And that's my natural tendency. But when I find the most fulfilled at social outings is when I feel like I've actually contributed to the social outing and that I wasn't just sitting there watching. So I actually find that it's super helpful to have these conversation starters because it helps me get engaged in conversation and it helps me feel like, wow, I actually started a conversation with people. That is a massive win when you struggle with social anxiety to start a conversation with someone, to join a conversation with someone, to allow yourself to be around people. Like these are all really big wins. So I want to set you up. So that when you do get yourself in those scenarios by leaving your house, that you are able to have conversations with people and connect with people and actually contribute. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness sakes. If I were a good video editor, I might edit those yawns right out, but I'm not. So you're just going to keep seeing them. <laughs> so that's my tip for overcoming social anxiety. If any of this resonated with you, I highly encourage you just take, take a step. Take some new action to get yourself out. So, wrap it up a lot. Got it, got it. I will wrap it up right there. But leave your house, batch your social outings, and decide, like, have a few conversation starters. Those are your three tips right there. Three tips to overcome social anxiety. So, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you here next week. Growth and Grace every Thursday, 6 a.m. Bye for now.